us both. Magic. Uh, there we are. Welcome everybody to the first. Is this the first? It is the first interview, the first live between the two of us anyway. Yes, uh, me basically putting Steve on the spot uh, and putting all the pressure on Steve tonight. So if you are joining us live, uh, I've actually managed to get this like freaking everywhere. It's on the Facebook group. It's on the Facebook page. Uh, it's on, I think it's even on my LinkedIn. That's probably not super professional, but hey, uh, it's on YouTube. I think it's even on Twitter. Like we're, I've managed to get it everywhere. So who knows what's going to uh, happen with, uh, with this? Uh, I can see, I'm going to try and watch the comments, Steve, in the group. I can see we've got Gary here. We've got Tyler here. We've got John here. Um, as you guys come in, make sure you say hi, uh, give us a like or say something in the comments. Let us know that you are here. I think you're probably 30 seconds or so behind uh, behind us. I'm just trying to find out where I can see the chat. Where's it gone? Uh, is that it? Yep. Got Dan. Hello, Dan. Hello, Graham. Hello, Lewis. Those boys are in at the start. Dan was the Perfect. first one. <clears throat> Uh, we'll get, I was, but I said I said before this, Steve, that we'd have a, give a couple of minutes for everybody to get in. Uh, I, I'm actually realising that I need a couple of minutes for me and you to actually figure out what on earth we're doing. Uh, is and when I say me and you, I, I actually just mean me. Uh, so <laughs> so here we are here. But we've got uh, I think we've got like 20 odd people in the group already. Uh, some people on YouTube as well. Great. Um, I can see we've got oh, it's numbers are just going up and up and up. Awesome. Um, Guys, as you come in, give us a shout. Let us know that you're here. And then in over the next uh, couple of minutes, me and Steve will dive in. Uh, we kind of wanted to pitch this, pitch this? It's the wrong phrase, isn't it? Kind of wanted this to be a relaxed vibe, a uh, Steve and I chat, just uh, finding out me basically wanting to ask Steve a load of questions from a very, very average golfer's point of view. Oh, by the way, tour hacker t-shirt, tour <laughs> Tour Hacker right here. Tour Hacker t-shirt is on. Uh, I know a few of you have actually ordered yours already, so that's awesome. Uh, thank you for everyone who's already ordered one of those. Excited to see you guys uh, repping those. Uh, I'm now not following the chat. Are you still following the chat, Steve? Yeah, Graham said it's a double act. It's a double act. Yeah, absolutely. We've got Ellis in there, Matthew, Wayne. Hey, guys, hope you guys are all doing uh, awesome. Uh, I'm actually going to load up. See if I can load up YouTube. I've no idea how we watch all the comments coming in. Uh, hey, the group's the, where's the group? Okay, perfect. We're there. Um, awesome. So we wanted to be we wanted it to be a relaxed vibe, you know, kind of fireside chat with Phil vibe. Except uh, I don't have a fire. Steve, do you have a fire? No. No, I don't even. I've got some candles somewhere, but so we thought we'd go for a more relaxed kind of uh, craft beer session. I think Steve put his. He's gone for a, what have you gone for there? A goose IPA. Yeah, nice. Uh, I've, I'm have i going to take a pick. Do I go for the, oh my word, that's a six and a half percent Pilsner. That looks pretty decent. And then I've got a, a stout here as well to try. I've not tried either of these before. Six and a half percent. That feels strong. It's a lager as well. Pilsner as well. Oh um, God, battery acid. <laughs> <laughs> um, is anyone else watching joining us with a beer or is it just me and steve has anyone else got a beer i'm opening mine steve by the way i hope that's a yeah it's mine's on um oh that is outstanding fact i'm gonna glass it uh, as you guys come in let us know how you're doing anyone else here i'm sure i've seen ellis cooper yeah i am absolutely should make for a more fun interview, right? Uh, there we go. That looks good. Look at that. Beautiful. Cheers. Uh, who else we got? Uh, Graham's already on his second. Excellent, Graham. That means that me and Steve need to uh, uh, play some catch up. Excellent. So we've uh, had a couple of minutes there. I feel like people who are jumping in will all be here yep. uh, already. <coughs> um, and now I've got a few people watching. Oh, there's people watching on my personal. I put it on my personal one as well. I didn't even know how I've done this. So that's fantastic. Uh, ben Edwards. Uh, I love that he's here because he said I'm so into golf, but he's absolutely lying. Uh, please, no swearing. Lewis, I can't I can't promise that, I'm afraid. Um, just absolutely. That's not something that I'm able, <laughs> able to do. Uh, but I will. I will. I'm, I can't. I can't promise that. Um, 
Chris Mead loving the Sunday Ray Golf Group. Good. I love that. Uh, so let's, Steve, I'll tell you what, let's, let's kind of dive in. In fact, what I wanted to do, guys, was uh, me, I kind of, I, where this all started, I wrote it in the post, but where this all started was me kind of wanting to, well, A, want to get better at this game. Uh, I don't know about you, but it's infuriating that I'm not getting better. And I, I had a lesson with Steve a few, well, I've had a couple now, and I a few weeks back. And I just load the guy with questions. I'm like, tell me about this. Tell me about this. Tell me about that. How should I practice? How should I do this? What should I be doing? Uh, and Steve's really good at actually going, Chris, shut up. Um, you just need to focus on this one or two things. Uh, but I thought, you know, what would be quite cool is if I actually started asking all these questions and you guys got to come along for the ride with us, essentially, right? You guys then get to ask your questions as well in the group. Uh, you guys get to um interact you guys get to see the answers and it's the questions hopefully the questions that i'm asking are questions that you'd be asking as well so basically i thought let's put steve on the spot let's put him under a bit of pressure uh let's see how he deals uh, with this probably excellently uh, and i just get to sit back and and find out information basically so that was kind of the idea behind this uh what turns out will well how this ends up we will see and then for those of you who stay uh, till the end, I've got no idea how this is going to, how long this is going to last, by the way. Um, Steve has told me that I've got to give him a, like a timeout signal when he's like talking too much. Uh, so uh, I don't know how we're going to manage him there. Uh, but if you stay till the end, we're going to launch something and it's, we're like super excited about this, super, uh, super excited. And there's going to be a special offer as well for, uh, for you guys. And by the way, if this, uh, style of interview questioning whatever goes well we'll try and make it some form of a regular feature so we can get some more uh, content out to you guys uh, which would be really cool uh, and I'm also thinking Steve, I, what I, one thing I reckon we should do is actually like I should have a lesson and you sh we should we should live stream the lesson <laughs> actually break down the rubbish that is my uh, swing I'm just going to put this up a little bit uh, so right I've been now chatting for far too long Steve yeah, time out, time out, Chris. So uh, for anyone who hasn't come across you in the group yet, uh, which I'm not quite sure how that'd be possible because you pop up on almost every post and have been amazing at giving people advice and guidance on their swing. So thank you for that. I really appreciate it. I know the group appreciates it as well. Uh, but just in case anyone hasn't come across you yet, can you just give us the 30 seconds, Steve Furlong at intro? Who are you? Where are you from? What are you doing? And give us the, give us the rundown. Okay, right. Yeah, well, thanks, Chris, for the intro. Uh, before I start, I just want to say thank you to everyone in the group for all the videos, really. I, I can't do my, you know, what I want to do without them. And uh, it takes some courage to post your swing in front of a thousand people or so, or however many people are viewing it. So um, it's fantastic. And I love the comments and I like the challenging feedback as well, because, you know, that makes me... Um, reflect a little bit and uh you know if somebody asks me why I, I i need to explain it better so i get better as a coach so it's all good so keep them coming please so um yeah a little bit about me so oh wow where do i start 22 years in the golf industry and um, that's a good starting point um bit of a dinosaur now been in around seeing a lot of things happen in this industry uh 20 years managing facilities driving ranges proprietary owned golf clubs uh privately owned uh, golf clubs. And I'm now currently a range owner myself as well. So two years owning a driving range. 16 years coaching, um, given probably coached over 10,000 people, you know, over the years, lots of people. Um, my clients, they range from complete beginners, um, you know, people picking up the club for the first time to aspiring professionals um, or elite players. Um, tournament professionals and also long drive competitors now I'm teaching long drivers um, a little bit about my success and improvements uh, average improvement of my players it was a tough one I, um, I, I wanted to I questioned you on this because I was like uh, I know we had the conversation of uh, Steve was basically he was like yeah so I've been in the industry this long I've been doing this 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 and this I've got some questions for you anyway Steve I was like yeah but all I want to know is how much I'm going to improve by. So <laughs> give, us, give us this rundown, Steve. Okay, so I mean, people are averaging. It's all, all about what they put in, right? Um, you know, how much how much time I get with them, what they put in, how they put it in. 
Um, and that's obviously something we're going to elaborate a little bit more on today. But um, two to three shots on average per season, I would say, comfortably. I've seen bigger games than that. And you often see that, you know, that's just me feeding back through text messaging. But also with stats and stuff, you can actually track and see how they're getting on. So, you know, it's quantified. It's always measured. We're looking at it and validate what, what I say. So um, I wanted to say something here, career highlights and something that you had asked me, what kind yeah, of so. what good things have I have happened in my career? What of what's achievements would I say? I'd say probably my finest achievement is having somebody from a complete beginner, a nine-year-old, get to zero handicap. So I've taken a beginner to scratch. Um, That's I've, amazing. I've taken a beginner to set in a course record. So somebody had never picked up a golf club to set in a course record. And I've taken a beginner to a club champion, uh, a golf club as well. So... Um, so they're probably my highlights. Um, and um, then... I know, can I just stop you there? Because I know there's a few people uh, who are in the group. I think uh, Chris Mead, one of them, um, hashtag um, bandit central right there, mm. uh, having lessons with you and then is like just dominating our golf day uh, a few weeks back. And then, it, and then there was a few others as well. I was like, all of the top six seems to seem to have recently had lessons with Steve. <laughs> so I think that kind of summed up. I was like, okay, I'm feel like we should all get lessons with Steve. I think that's kind of where we should be at. But that was, for me, was just a bit of a, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, no, that's that's pr pretty much me in a nutshell and my job and what I do. And obviously, you know, I was very uh, grateful, very pleased to have met you, um, you know, by chance reaching out to you over discussions about golf holidays, I think, originally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Seeing your videos, loved what you did with Sunday Red and, um, you know, so proud to be one of the founding members joining the group at member number two or three, wasn't I, or something? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then kind of, I think one of the first questions I asked you was, you know, what, what do I do in the group, Chris? And <laughs> you said, just be yourself. I'm yeah, like, be normal, be okay. a human being. Be, be Steve, all right. So <laughs> that's where the kind of the comments started coming along and, and that's kind of how it's gone. So um, yeah, and look at it now, it's amazing. These guys, you know, folks are just incredible, really what they're doing and, you know, where we've got to and how the group is growing. Can't do it without those guys, right? No, 100%. And it's um, it's great that everybody gets so involved. Everyone's chatting away. I'm just looking at the comments here. And we've got uh, Chris has said uh, he's been crushing his five iron since the video that you gave him. Graham, Graham's taken seven off his handicap. Okay, since uh, having lessons with you. That's that's awesome. Absolutely I'm going to add that, that to the career highlights. Uh, yeah, yeah, that needs to be added to your career highlights for sure. Uh, so now that we've done enough patting each other on the on the back and being like, well done, team. Uh, now let's let's get into it. So one of the one of the big things that I see and do myself is get frustrated with well, get frustrated with not getting better, right? And I feel like I put in or have done in the past, put in a lot of time and effort on the range. Uh, and practicing because I, I know if if you tell me to go do something and I don't do it I come from a coaching background and my worst like thing was telling clients to go do something and then they're not doing it and I was like and then moaning that they weren't getting results so when when a coach tells me to do something I go do it and but I know I can go to a range and I press the button for 100 balls and an hour goes by and I leave and six months later of doing that I'm still no better off like I know I'm still not improving my game as much as I feel like I'm good I might I might feel like I'm hitting the ball better but my scores don't reflect that um by the way is anyone if anyone's watching does anyone feel like this does anyone feel like they get stuck does anyone feel like they're kind of like they practice a lot they put in the time and the effort but just not getting the improvement they want is anyone is anyone feeling that at the moment just give us a thumbs up or something in the um uh, in the comments obviously don't don't, don't do that at the screen because we can't see you um, but just give us a thumbs up or something saying, yeah, that's you. If you feel like your practice, like the amount of time you put in practice doesn't get the results quite that you that you want, let us know. Because that's this is essentially what we're talking about today. Three um, thumbs up. <clears throat> all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay, perfect. Um, so that's great. So there is people that are feeling like that as well. Um, uh, Chris, I just see Chris says he can't see, he can't see any comments. Chris, that's because you're, I think you're watching it on my personal profile. Uh, you can, and Lewis as well, you, if you head into the group, you'll be able to see 
uh, everyone else's comments. You're just watching it on my personal profile. So head on over to the Sunday Red Golf group. We won't, I won't worry about you leaving that video for a second. And um, then you'll be able to see everyone's comments and see all the comments about you being a bandit, Chris, uh, from there. So, uh, so this is where the conversation started with Steve. I was like, Steve, how can I improve my practice? How can I get like spend my time better? Also, having had uh, having had a kid, uh, Noah, who is now fifteen weeks ish, uh, December the second, he was born. At least I can get that right. Uh, my time on the range has been dramatically reduced, as well as being on the course. Right. So, whereas I was going twice a week to the range, I might now be going once a week. Uh, and even then I'm like, I'm not there for as long as I would have been before. So I was, I was basically saying, Steve, how do I get the most out of my time at the range? And then that's where I was like, Hey, you know what? I think everyone would, everyone would benefit from hearing the answer to this because it probably goes into a lot of uh, how we can all improve our practice. I think that's kind of where we're at. Wasn't it, Steve? Absolutely. So I think, I think the, and what, 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 what we've come up with or what you've, I say, what, you, what you've come up with and what you wanted to share was the three secrets, right? So how to practice like a pro, the three secrets uh, to better practice. And what I'm going to let you do is I'm going to let you dive into one and then we're going to question it. We're going to dive into it. We're going to ask, get some examples and things like that. So uh, this is for, who, who is this for? Who should be paying attention, Steve? Who should be paying attention and who, like, what, what are we going to get out of this? Uh, right, so let's, let's, let's talk about amateur golfers, um, you know, aspiring player, anyone that wants to, you know, to improve, to, you know, is serious about their game. So let's talk about, you know, point number one then. First secret, and I see this as being, you know, probably one of the most important. And you mentioned that you go and get 100 balls. Um, you know, I, as a manager, have seen over the years when I used to see people buying thousands of golf balls, you know, doing, taking baskets, you know, and just whacking drivers. So it's about quality, not quantity. Okay. okay? So it's not just about pounding golf ball after golf ball. It's about making sure that every ball counts. Every shot counts. So how do you do that? Well, importantly, what I would say is follow some kind of a routine, you know, what you're going to be using on the golf course, you know, have a pre-shot routine, right? You know, when I see somebody standing on the range mat, hits a golf ball, rakes out another one, hits a golf ball, rakes out another one, hits a golf ball, you know, I'm looking at it and thinking, when are you going to do that? You know, when are you doing that second shot in a row? It's going to be when you hit it out of bounds, right? Because that's where you drop the ball in the same place and stand in the same place. So yeah. what, why are you doing that? So, you know, even if you was to stay with one golf club and you're grinding a swing, for example, we talked a little bit more about, you know, how to break your practice down into different sort of phases a little bit later. But you know, even if you was to, you know, have one club, step off the range map and then step back into it again. You know, walk away, walk back in, make it like a routine, like you're on a golf course, if you can, as much as you can. Right. So I know I'm staying in the kind of the block practice kind of section at the moment. So one club, maybe one target um, at this stage. But yeah, step away, follow your routine. Right. Even if it kind of break, just a, a little icebreaker in there, really, really important. Um, and then that's going to replicate more of what you're going to do. You know, we put the club in the bag, we walk after the golf ball, we're going to hit a completely different shot. Um, okay, so let me let, let me just stop you there. So I so I turn up to the range, right? I'll get my hundred balls, put them into the the machine thing, uh, and I basically will then do like. 15 wedges right 15 wedge shots i definitely won't walk off the step off the mat in between, in between every shot although i may i will do that now so I, and to be honest with you i probably don't even have a proper pre-shot routine that's probably a whole conversation for another day so so even on so first of all the first point to take is i i i get my balls put them in and even on the warm-up even on my like my first 15 wedges hit a wedge step off get the ball down reset come back on aim for the target and go again yeah okay great i can do that 
every single one. And I would I would stick to your route. If you haven't got a routine, guys, is create a routine. Create a pre-shot routine. Why not? You know, stand behind the golf ball, line it up, put your club down like, you know, like Justin Rose does, puts it down the target line, walks up next to the ball, has a practice swing and then puts his club behind the ball and pulls the trigger. You okay. should create a routine. Those of you that struggle with, um, you know, performing under pressure, you know, when you have that tee shot, when people are watching and the knees are trembling and you duff it. If you're struggling under pressure, you haven't got a very good routine because if you're in the routine, you're in the moment. When I'm, some of the best shots I've ever played in my career, you know, I can recall, you know, Albatross on a par five, I've eagled the last to shoot, you know, to win a, a medal when I was an amateur. Uh, at you're, you're, you're now talking about things that we're never going to experience or <laughs> very rarely <laughs> going to experience. Um, but both of those, if I was to take those two shots that I've just talked about there mentioned there, I was absolutely in my routine. There was nothing going on. I wasn't thinking about, did I lock the car? Did I record EastEnders? Did I, you know, leave the oven on? You know, I was absolutely in my process, in my routine. Nothing else was on the planet. Just me, that club and that ball and where I wanted it to go. Yeah, I think the, I think it's, I think I, I, I do think that's important. I think I definitely need to, especially on the range as well, focus on stopping after a shot, good or bad. Because of, often, and I think as Atale said in here, the automatic tee is a killer. And as I've said, that's what I have. The automatic tee pops up yeah. and I'm like, I'm good to go. And I think even when I hit, it's actually more often when I hit a good shot that I don't step off and do it. Like if I hit a bad shot, I'm like, oh, walk off, reset, go again. When I hit a good shot, I'm like, oh, let's do it again, right? <laughs> I get excited and I'm like, don't move, do exactly as I just did and replicate. And I think that's, even at that point, it's not just on the bad shots that I need to stop. It's on the, the, the good ones that I actually need to go, right, reset, go again. Because you're saying that would be more beneficial, right? Yeah, 100%. Okay, so step off the mat each time. That I can definitely do. And we're, yeah. so we're still on quality over quantity. What else What else comes into quality over quantity? So I uh, another thing as well. Each Every golf ball you're going to hit is an exam. Right? Say that again. Every golf ball that you hit, treat it as an exam. Okay. What do you mean by that? It's a test. Okay. It should be you should be trying to do something with that ball, whatever it is. So you you revise for an exam. So your practice swings are revision to take that exam, that test. Okay. You're rehearsing something. What are you trying to rehearse? Okay, you're making a swing change. Okay. The feel versus real. I mean, I can put up, you know, I haven't got them here, but you know, I've put up in the group before, you know, Justin Rose making very contorted. Like the swing. exaggerated movements yeah. right yeah alexander noran another one very contorted practice swings they look awful yeah they look like very painful um but the, he's trying to feel something and then he never delivers the golf club that way he never moves that way actually to hit a golf ball but that's his feel to create his reel which is the shot that he's after so don't be afraid of making, you know, very strange looking practice swings to get more out of that, that exam, you know. So you're rehearsing something. So I would say sort of two or three practice swings and one ball, because that's going to then cut your numbers down by two thirds, right? Yeah. Um, so instead of doing, you know, hitting 200 balls, you know, reduce it down. You don't need that many. So uh, and when, and one of the drills you gave me, Steve, was kind of the... Uh, like I'm not going to do it now, but kind of the, the full swing up to the top, yeah. bring it down, pause, and then kind of doing the, the I don't know what we call it, the kind of the pump action and then the, the hit through kind of the drill, yeah. right? And yeah. you said, you know, do two, three of those for every one full swing at that point in my, at that point in my training. 100%. Would you then do for a drill, if you, even if you're doing a drill, would you do two, three practice swings of the drill and then do the actual shot of the drill? Or is it just for a full swing that you're doing now? <laughs> I'd, I'd be dr I'd be drilling it and then then you've got to pull the trigger so there's a feel for something and then you've got to execute you've got to take the exam test it so, so do, even for the drills even for the drills do practice swing practice swing and then step up and do the drill as a reel uh I, I if you're going to step up you've got to step up and hit the shot so I mean you're drilling a, a certain position yeah you've then got to complete the position to the end of the swing yeah. Um, so yes, if that's what you're saying, yeah, definitely complete the swing um, and then execute it. No, what 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 I mean is, is if so, like you just said, you do two or three practice swings yeah. for your full swing, right? 
Yeah. But if like you get me, you have me doing a drill, which for me feels like a practice thing. I'm in, embedding a, a good habit. Yeah. Should I practice the the drill? If that makes sense. Should I do a practice swing of the drill before doing the real drill? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Perfect. Okay, that makes sense. So, so basically, two or three practice swings where you feel good about the swing. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah. Okay, right. Let me try that. Okay. And, a, and another thing you can do as well, just before we, because we can move on to number two shortly. Uh, yeah. Another another thing you can do is actually rate. Rank, rank the shot or rate the swing out of 10. So 10 being, you know, if the ball flight has gone where you want it to go, that's 10 out of 10, um, you okay. know, or, you know, the feel of that particular drill that you put the club there, you practiced it. Yeah, that was a 10. I felt like I was in that position on the drill, on the practice. Then you hit the golf ball. What's the ball done? Okay, rate it. If it's a four out of 10, what do you need it to be to be a seven or an eight? What do you need to do more of to make that four better? So you focus, you go straight back into that problem, um, you know, analysis mode and right problem solving. What do I need to do? Well, the drill felt like I was doing that. Maybe I need to feel like a, a 10 out of 10, the drill or 11 out of 10, the extreme feeling to actually get that result when you actually hit the ball. Perfect. And, and so that again, will come into taking time in between shots, right? So if we're purposefully... Again, I probably don't do that. I'm being, if I'm being brutally honest, I'll hit the shot. I'll be like, that was shit. Sorry, Lewis, whoever said, doing my bang language, that was rubbish or that was excellent. Let's do it again. So you're saying be more conscious, be, have more of a scoring system, you said. So we're going, right, that was a, a six out of 10. Step away. What do I need to do to make that a nine out of 10? What did I do differently? Yes. Okay. yes. And, and then. Again, I know we're talking about practice, but would you do that on the course as well, or would you just leave that off the course? No, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be doing that on the course. You've got that's only range you've time. Got, okay. You've got apps and various other things that you can use for your scoring and analysis and and breaking. Okay, great. Yeah. So, so every shot on the on the range, I'm scoring. I'm going. That was a, a five out of ten. Why? And we're we're basing that on feel, and then where the ball the ball flight and where it ended up. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? No, no. Okay, so I hit the shot. It goes okay. I pull it a bit left. I'm like, eh, it would still be in play. I'd call it a six. It felt okay, but the distance was ish okay, but the direction was not. That's a okay. six out of ten. What do I need to do? And is it when you say figure out what you need to do? Because sometimes I genuinely don't know. Yeah. Like sometimes I genuinely, I'll be, I'll hit the shot, and I'm like, I don't know what I did wrong there. Yeah. How? What? What do I do in that situation? Well, I mean, that probably takes us into, you know, uh, into something a little bit different. And now if I was to discuss something else and how you would, you know, if we was to take the actual session and break it down a little bit differently. So it's, we, so if we was to take a practice session, we should divide it into kind of into three sections as okay. such. Um, you know, so there's blocked practice where you're doing something with one club. Um, and then there's varied practice and then there's random practice. And I, I divide your session into, into those sort of in, into three different sections. Okay. Um, we're, are we coming to this later on? I feel like we're going to talk about this later on as well. Yeah. I was, I, I mean, I, I'm kind of sort of talking about the, the practice and how we should be focusing on that a little bit. Perfect. Okay, cool. So let's, so if we get so what, so block practice is what? Yeah. What, what is that though? Tell me what it is. So I take one. So that would be one club. Yeah, on the driving range, one club, same target, same uh, same particular shot. You're ten just, shots in a row. Yeah, ten shots in a row. Obviously, we're talking about stepping away, but just doing one club, same shot. Okay, I think I, to, that's definitely what I would I would say. Eighty percent of my practice looks like it would be fifteen yeah. wedges, twenty thirty eight irons, you know, some five irons hybrids driver like that and I would just go a hit 20 30 with each or whatever every now and again I might do 10 on each club or something like that um yeah. but yeah so that's block practice yeah okay so that's one version we can do that that's okay yeah so if you're hitting your irons and you've pulled one I mean you're you you're, you're looking at it you're but you're in your blocked practice phase you've got one iron and you're let's say a six iron and you're practicing your six iron you're working on your specific drills 
you know, you're getting a feel for that drill. Okay, yeah, that felt like it, I was doing it 10 out of 10 there, but it went a little bit left. What, what, why did it go left? Um, okay, you're still in that blocked mode. You need to kind of maybe just sort of step back a little bit. Why does the ball go left? What makes the ball go left? Um, you know, it's, it, there's, there's one of two things. Well, it's one main thing. It's the club face that yeah. makes the ball go in its direction. And then depending on how you're swinging the club and the direction of the swing, that's your curve um, or the potential of curve. So, um, you know, something that would, I think would be really helpful to the group. You showed me, if you don't mind sharing it, not now, but later on or tomorrow or wherever, you showed me when we had the lesson, it was like a grid of probably nine different like shots that you've done with like the, the line of the club face and the line of the swing. Yeah. That for me, I really should actually take with me and have like a visual representation of that on at the driving range so that when it goes left, I can be like, okay, that's what I did wrong. Because at yeah. the moment, I'm probably not at the point where I can be like, oh, I hit that shot. That means I've left the club face open and done this swing plane or whatever. Yeah. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Which thing I'm talking about? Well, the ball flights, basically the, the the arrows, the direction of the... Yeah, it's, it's a picture with like the club face and then the arrows coming off with the ball, depending on like club face is going that way. Yeah. Or, like swing pain was going that way. That might be really useful to share with the group as well, if you're okay sharing that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're the, they're the key things, you know, when I'm giving lessons, they're the things that I'm looking at. I'm looking at some of the direction of the, of the club through the golf ball and then the angle of the club face. Yeah. Um, you know, we also look at, you know, effectively the bottom of the swing. It's called low point because um, that, in, you know, effectively is the strike and, and, and the quality of strike um, that will that will you know determine where you hit it on the face. Um, but yeah, you, we're, we're looking at those things. So when it comes to direction, you know, it's got to be look at your, looking at your club face and then looking at your swing direction, whether you're cutting across it or whether you're coming into it, um, you know, from a, from a, you know, an extreme angle. Awesome. I took us way off on a tangent there. So we went, we got to block practice. Then what was the other two? Uh, so we got varied practice. Yeah. So now we can take that six iron and we can change target and we can change distance. Um, one thing I would say when you're on driving range mats, get used to aiming across the mat. Yeah, and I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> get used to it because you're going to stand on a golf course and you're going to be on a tee and the stripes are going to point in a direction away from the marker post and it's going to do your head in. Yeah, I mean, I cannot be alone with that. Does anyone else struggle to aim not straight on a range map does anyone else if the lines are pointing one way struggle to aim anywhere else i cannot be the only one uh that thinks that for sure okay so that's good and that also i think there was a i can't remember i think it was steve mentioned i saw a comment come up earlier about um that the range hides a lot of your bad shots because it's a perfectly flat lie etc um but again you can only practice well what, i guess what i ask you like you, how else can you practice apart from being out on the course and, and actually on the a grass range or whatever is it just things like that maybe aiming in different directions definitely aiming in different directions um different distances i mean that's a big thing you know golfers um have a problem that they've got 14 clubs and only 14 shots where actually one club should produce hundreds of shots right so let's take a pitching wedge that's average distance 120 yards you know, the amateur wedge is one club, one shot, 120 yards, where a pro wedge, he can hit it 100, 120 different shots. Yeah. Um, because he can hit that wedge one yard, two yards, three yards, depending on how much he practices, how good he gets, um, at what level he's playing at. Um, he should be able to, you should be able to hit so many different shots with your one club. Okay, fine. So very practice. We then take, uh, and I'll tell you why I don't do this, Steve. Because I, I often, let's say we take my six iron and... I almost feel like if I can't hit my six iron consistently to one target at one distance, why on earth am I trying to hit it a different shot shape to a different yardage to a different, like, is that, is, is doing that going to help me improve my normal regular shot? hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. So I should do that. Yes. It's engaging you. It's making you focus. You should be changing, changing the shot regularly because golf is ran is a totally random game. Every shot is different. Unless you hit it out of bounds and you drop, you drop it, you drop in the ball in the same place, right? Yeah. Your every shot's different, so you should be trying to make that six iron do different things if you're going to go into that varied mode. And and that will help me get my regular normal six iron shot better. 
uh, it will help you learn how to make that six iron more accurate. Okay. Because I, I honestly don't do it because I think, why on earth am I going to try and hit my six iron over there at this yardage when I can't even hit it my normal yardage at this point consistently? Yeah, but this is it. You know, golf's not about just hitting it dead straight in dead straight line, though, is it? We've got holes that have got curves. We've got flags that are in corners of the greens. We've got hazards that are guarding particular positions of the green, right? You need to understand how to... You will get so much more by hitting different shots with one club, by yeah. trying to... If you was to just go, and this is what children do incredibly well, and what I did as a kid with the juniors section when I was at Dorking Golf Club, we would go and just over on the putting green, and I'm sure you know if there was other pros here, we would they would be saying the same thing in their junior sections. You know, go and experiment, and don't be afraid of making a mistake. You yeah. know, you go and try these different shots with a six iron. You know, try and play a flop shot with a six iron. Try and hook it with a six iron. Try and hit it over that corner of the driving range. Because if you learn how to do that yourself, you become incredible at, at you know, at this sort of self kind of regulating and, and stuff. You, you start to, um, you know, you, you work out how to do it yourself and that's how you learn it. That will ingrain much deeper when you learn to do it without being told and you learn by mistake and error as well. Because golf, you've got to accept you are going to make hundreds of errors, thousands of errors and the best players have mo made the most errors and they're not afraid of making an error 100 percent. no i think that's i think that's accurate I'm, and i'm smiling so i'm just reading a Tyler's comment he's like uh so you should be able to comfortably hit three different shots with every eye and i thought he was going to go straight uh fade in a draw and he's gone for uh thin fat flush <laughs> <laughs> I think we can all probably relate to that. I can hit all three of those in every club. That's not a problem. Well, the, the thing is with this is that, you know, if you learn how to hit it fat, you're going to then learn how to hit it. If, if I was to say, right, okay, if we, and, and a task you can set yourself. And I mean, this is moving into kind of, with society to go into a little bit of secret number two here. Um, whereas, you know, I was saying to you that num the, the second secret really is making sure your practice is challenging and engaging. So we're talking about engagement here by trialing, testing different shots and trying to do some, you know, some funky things with, with the club and trying to do, move it around. Um, if you was to put a line on the ground, um, I mean, I can, I think I can share the screen here. So you definitely can pause just for a second. Can you, so we had, just, I just want to recap here. So we had uh, quality versus quantity was number one. I just want to do a quick recap of that. So quality versus quantity, Basically taking your time, right? So get your get the golf ball, step off the mat every, between every shot, two or yeah. three practice swings every time. Yeah. Rank every shot that you hit based on how it felt, where it went, um, and then the different types of practice. Is that covered everything there? Yep. Yeah. Perfect. And then what is just remind me, I missed it. What is the secret number two? Secret number two. So make sure your session is challenging and engaging. I'm literally making notes here, right? That's like, <laughs> so that's what I'm asking. Challenging and engaging, right? You know, and we 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 we, we touched on that. You know, we we we're already been touching on that particular, you know, that that secret right there. So you know, so in that varied stage of the six iron, exploring it and trying different shots. Um, and I was going to say here with uh, Italo's put down, you know, hitting it fat and then flushing it. You know, there, there is actually merits in trying to learn how to do that. Um, and if I was to put this up here and have a little look at this one. So this is a task that I quite often, um, you know, set yourself task when you're practicing. This particular one here I call strike the tape or scrape the tape. So really simple, you can use duct tape. I've got masking tape here, but put a line on the ground um, which represents where the ball's going to be. So now we're going to start to manage low point. So if, you know... See, are we supposed to be able to see a picture here? I can see, like, I can see a... Uh, I can see, like, pick one, pick two, pick three, pick four, pick five. Should I be able to see... I can see that one. Why is that not coming up on my... Hang on a second. You might have just shared the wrong screen, that's all. So why is that? Aha, uh -huh, okay. So if that's here, why? How do I? Um, how do I open that up? Is that if you click on share screen, does it give you an option of which screen to share? It might just be that you're showing the wrong. No. Hang on a second. Try that again. I might need you to pull that picture up. 
you might be better at it. Have you got that picture on your laptop? I can probably find it. You keep talking. Uh, so, yeah, so if you put a, a bit of um, duct tape on the ground uh, where the golf ball would be, and then you deliberately try and hit behind the line, behind the duct tape, one swing, and then you try and hit in front of the duct tape, second swing, and then try and hit the duct tape itself, third swing, that help you understand low point. And you're beginning to, you know, starting to, you know, self-regulate a little bit there. Um, and you're discovering self, this discovery stuff is, is the best way to learn, as I was saying. And you're staying really engaged in this because it's making you really think really hard and work it out. Problem solving. Golf's about problem solving. Okay. You know, okay. Steve, I can't find that image. I don't know sure if you sent it through or not. But what we can do is if you, you could actually just drop it into the comments on the group and we'll be able to, in the video, we'll be able to see it. That could be either do that now or later. But basically yeah. what we're saying is put a, a stripe of masking tape and the ball, I assume, is going before the masking tape. Uh, it's going, the ball would be effectively, so if you was to put a line of tape on the ground between your two feet, yeah. where the golf ball would be. Um, so effectively, you would, the ball would be on the, if you put a ball down, it would be on the tape. Got you. Right? Okay. okay. So move the ball away. Now try and hit behind the tape, a point behind the tape. Okay. Yeah. And then, so... I would say, so, okay, so if we got the golfer's feet here and that's the line, okay? So you got the golfer's feet. Excellent. Yeah. Drive. Yeah. Oh, art wasn't my strength at school. <laughs> Two feet and there's the line, right? So you're trying to hit back here. Okay. One shot, one swing. So that would be a fat shot. Then you're trying to hit over here. So get your low point over here. Yeah. And then you try and hit the tape. Okay, so you, you're practicing hitting in the three different positions. Yes. Okay, great. That, I mean, that's relatively, and that's a, bit, a nice visual cue. You would like, you wouldn't almost need the tape. If you're at the range and didn't have tape, you can almost put the ball down, not hit the ball, but just be like, okay, hit behind the ball, hit on the ball, hit in front of the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, what, okay, so that we're on challenging and engaging. So that's a challenge, right? And that's engaging because you're trying to do different shots. Is that what you mean by that? Yes. Okay, what else? What else have we got in challenging and engaging? So uh, I've got um, testing yourself. Okay. So skills tests, create your own skills tests. You know, um, some if, if, you know, people need me a little bit more advice on this, I can, I can give them advice and we can talk about this more in the group on another day. But, um, you know, just, just setting yourself, you know, two targets, pick two targets, two flags, create a goal, if, if a driving range, some of these driving ranges have got like rugby posts, mm. um, you know, which is really cool. Um, but if you don't have rugby posts, just choose two flags, roughly 50 yards apart, um, and then try and, you know, give yourself points for hitting in between the two posts, okay? Mm -hmm. And then you can give yourself points for bending it, curving it, drawing it into the posts. You can give yourself points for you know you can have a task that if you hit it over the posts or you hit it short of the posts or you hit it in line with the posts um you know giving yourself you know testing yourself regularly and have that same test running so when you go down there the second time what's the score um what's the score that you've got to beat um roll out three balls six balls whatever it is Give yourself a number of balls that the the test is, um, and and that, and that, that always screws me up. So I do like a, I, I I'll often be right. I've got five balls here, and I you know the goal is to hit this shape shot or whatever to this target. So, or like normally what I do is I'm like right, I want to try and get this flag, and I want to try and go round that flag type yeah. as an example. Is that that's kind of what you're talking about, right? Yeah, absolutely. I'll take five of them, and I don't right. I've got to hit all five, and I'll always bottle it on one of them. And always screw it up on one. I might do the first two well, then third is rubbish. But that's what you're talking about, right? So you're giving yourself kind of little mini games to play. Absolutely. And it just keeps you focused, you see. I've always just standing there doing that same thing all the time, same club, same target, mat, right angles to the mat, all of this kind of stuff. No, well, no. Okay, no. so I'm going to tell you a little story here, Steve. I don't know if I've ever told you this. And if there's any of my uh, little golf group watching, this will make them crack up. When you talk about 
aiming at like different flags, making it do different things, trying to create different shots, not doing the normal thing. We did this with putting in a in, in an unintentional way at Val de Lobo. Yeah. We were on the Saturday, we finished our round. We had a few beers after the round uh, and then we took to the putting green. I think there was like 10 of us and we had what ended up being like a four hour, uh, what we called the World Putting Championships. And instead of just putting to the like the nearest pin we created courses right so you'd be like right you want to go round that one you want to go round here come back in before even going like all joking aside it was hilarious it was great fun we spent a long time on there but that was practice yeah brilliant. I mean, we had a few beers so probably less effective than what it should have been but that's what you're saying right create different challenges don't just do the obvious thing right yeah absolutely yeah. i can say golf's random so you know i'm not saying that you know you're going to be putting through bushes and around bushes and stuff like that but you know you're going to be putting up big slopes across slopes double breakers you know two tier greens you know all sorts of things so you know it just opens your imagination a little bit more rather than it being that kind of military kind of straight line it's not about straight lines it's about learning how to 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 get the ball from a to b and what you can love it how else can we make it challenging and engaging so i i've got talking a little bit more about sort of having some tasks um you know so i I took that that first one was a was a strike task so having the tape on the ground um i would uh the directions would be having the posts um and then, you know, if you want to get, so that would be to help you with direction. So having the goal posts. So we've got kind of strike tasks. We've got direction tasks. And then I would say some kind of speed tasks. Okay. Well, um, and it's, you know, you've got to, there's, the, if you're going to, if you, you have to move the club faster, right? Yeah. So, you know, and the, the way that we do that, you, you've got to, you can't stand there with driver and try and steer it. You've got to stand there with driver and hit it as hard as possible. Okay. And, you know, and this is, this is the thing we, we, you know, you pick the driver out and you're seeing people, you know, steering it and, and holding back. It's the worst thing. You know, you better change club and go to something else. You know, if you get, it's, you, you've got to swing the thing as fast as possible. Okay. Um, there's, but there's like, for me, so, okay, so first of all, I've never played into the whole, well, there's the whole, like, just slow it down, you'll hit it better. So you're saying that's not, that's not what we should be focusing on. Like, if you hit a bad shot with the driver, you shouldn't try and slow it down, because that's going to mess up your timing, right? If you want to, the thing is, I've got so many people, so many people come to me for golf lessons and want to hit it further, right? And, you know, you shouldn't, you, slowing, slowing your swing down is not always, is not always the right thing to do, not for everybody. Okay, so, uh, cha- so I, I, challenging, engaging. So what's the challenge here? So speed, a speed challenge. Speed How challenge. I, so basically just picking up the driver and hitting it as, as fast as I can. Yeah, swing it as fast as possible. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, and I think with a lot of the driving ranges now, you've got these top tracers and stuff or whether you've got something to measure your club speed and you can buy them for, you know, a couple of hundred quid, these little mini radars that measure club speed. You should be going and trying to up your club speed. I'm, I'm just waiting. I'm looking at the comments, just waiting for uh, Ben Fowler to chirp in and be like, Chris, you still never get past my nine iron or something like that and still can't break 200 yards on my driver. Uh, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm literally waiting for the band to here to start rolling in. Um, but OK, so we've got challenging and engaging skills tests. So kind of saying, um, I, I think I've understood this right. I take like five shots and I'm going, right, sh- my goal is to do whatever it is, create a challenge of my own. Yeah. And get, add points if it does. If it goes to the target, that's two points. If it goes to the target in the way that I want it to go there, that's five points or something, right? Yep. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, yep. Okay, yep. awesome. So then we have the strike test. So oh. you're trying to hit one fat. You're trying to hit one on the thing. You're trying to hit one in front of it. Then we've got a direction test, so aiming for certain goalposts. And then we've got a speed test, basically picking up the driver and swinging as fast as you can. Swing as fast as you can, absolutely. So there, there be your tasks to keep it challenging and engaging. And, and you mentioned you mentioned top tracer, and and I am lucky enough to have two local top tracer ranges now, which is amazing. But they they do quite a good job. Like one thing that I love about top tracer is it actually does create challenging and engaging situations. Like you have the points game where you aim for a target, and you can then say, right, I'm going to pick three different targets and aim for the three. Different. Like it's challenging. It's actually, it is scoring you. It's not scoring you based on like the flight of the ball. And sometimes I get points because I've 
like thinned it off into a different target than what I'm aiming for. Uh, yeah. And I still accept those points. But the idea of it is the same. Right? You're aiming for a particular target, change that, change this, change that. Yeah. Yeah? Okay, Absolutely. great. So, and, and I guess this is for me, when, even when I go to top tracing now, it's not just have it on the standard, watch where your shot goes, it's actually play some of those different games. Because, yeah, 100%. Um, yeah. 100%. Play the game. It's gonna, it, it, it just keeps you engaged more. It's, it's challenging you and engaging you, like the game. You've got to get it as, you know, you've got to get it as random as possible. I know we talked, you know, about the different phases, blocks varied, and and then, you know, random. I didn't really talk too much about random, but it's, it's tr just, that's what it's got to be, the practice session to help you get improve. And it ingrains much deeper when you're doing it that way as well. The discovery stuff is, is really, really important. Okay. I guess I guess my thought process, and this is obviously not totally accurate, but I get if you've told me, Chris, here's your drill that I want you to go do. For me, if I've got one practice session a week, yeah, I want to focus on that drill for a lot of the practice session because that's the good habit that I'm trying to embed. If I then take off of that and then try and do the different game, like where where am I? Be am I supposed to just do both? Like where is my time better spent? So if let's take an hour session, sixty yeah. minutes, twenty minutes practicing your drill, blocked practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Rate the drill from you know the, the the ball being the exam. So rate it each time you hit it. You yeah. know, practice swings, rate it out of ten. Okay, that felt like I did the drill ten out of ten. Hit the ball. No, it wasn't. Do it again, do it again. 20 minutes of that. Okay, 20 minutes of varying it now. Now you need to stop thinking about this drill. You now need to get into the varied mode. You need to take the six iron and start to explore the six iron. Okay. Right? And you can change clubs here as well if you want to. Yeah? Yeah, I'm writing this down. Sorry, keep going. You get in 20 minutes of your blocks, your grind, your swing grind. Yeah. Then you go 20 minutes into your varied practice to get that six iron and find out what else it can do. So that's your challenging and you're engaging. Yeah. Yeah. But that's that switches that I mean that switches that on as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then 20 minutes, the last 20 minutes is is completely random. So and now this that is target club, and you're changing it all the time. Shot okay. type completely random every single ball that you hit needs to be a completely different shot a different club got you and this and this is and this is then where we get to what i've because i've got it written here in the notes this is then taking us on to number three right which is replicating play great so three so number three replicating play which yep. which is random i guess right start moving so, into that phase yeah Okay, so what do we mean by replicating play? So the thing is, the, with the game of golf, it is completely random. You've got, you know, the next shot, you know, even playing a round of golf on the second day at the same course, you, you, and unless you're, the tee box is in the same place, you're hitting every shot different again, right? Yeah. And flag positions generally have changed, et cetera, et cetera. So you need to be, when you walk off that practice range, you need to have walked off that range in some kind of random mode which is replicating play. So if you're at a top tracer, you can play a course. Um, if you're at the driving range, you can imagine a golf course, pick a fairway, choose two flags, 70 yards apart, hit your driver, uh, choose a flag and either side of it, 30 yards, you know, hit a six iron. If you missed it, take a pitching wedge, chipper, nine iron. Um, if you want to turn back to the carpet, putt a ball along the carpet, then go back hole number two, hit a free wood, and this assuming you don't have top tracer. Yeah, I was going to say, because uh, again, with top tracer, you can actually play virtual golf. Yes. And and just, I'm just saying out there, I, just in case you want to give me some banter, uh, me and Ben uh, Fowler, so you'll see in the group, we went to the range the other day and we literally just played nine holes and played the front nine at Pebble Beach. Like that was, that's that's replicating play. Yes. You're going driver, top check 30 yards great hit my next shot whatever it is right so that's replicating play yes absolutely okay, and so if you didn't have top tracer you just do the same thing but without the top tracer you just go right driver that's for my target then i'm going six iron i'm aiming over there now that's my target that, that's what we're doing right yes awesome okay perfect so that, and anything else to re or is that is that is it as simple as that literally just make it make it relevant don't don't hit two of the same iron or 
club in a row, basically. Not allowed to hit two sh- same shots in a row. Not unless you're practicing hitting it out of bounds. Okay. <laughs> Which I'm quite good at. In, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, you can you can do that if you want to, but it's so if you if you boom it and it goes miles left, right, whatever, you go, actually that'd be out of bounds. I've got to hit that again. Three off the team. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. awesome. So um I want to mention as well. So you you've got you've got you should have set your fairway. You should have had two flags that are your fairway whip if it, you okay. can carve it off and that first hole you know over there is out of bounds, then you 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 need to you need to have the emotion of that as well and take three off the tee. And I've kind and I've heard what other people I've so I've spoken to other people and it's uh, where they've said, yeah, I'm playing a certain course and they're and I'm sitting, meeting, I'm talking to them at the range and they're saying, yeah, I'm playing course X tomorrow and they'll play in their head the first five holes. Yeah. Like they'll they'll go, okay, I know the first hole does this. I'm going to go drive on and they'll play the first five holes in their range session. Do you recommend that doing that? Is that what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Even so much, just go to the, you know, the back of the range where the carpet is and put a couple of balls up and down just at the end of the hole and then go back and walk on the mat again, back to this routine thing, right? Stepping away and not putting two footprints in the same place on the mat, you know, just making sure that, you know, you're breaking it up. Absolutely. And then you, you've you got the best opportunity, best chance that this is going to convert to the golf course because you've, you've gone and got your fix on your swing. You've gone and done your swing grind. You've gone and discovered the club a little bit more and actually started to understand that the golf club can do so many different things other than hit it one yardage. Yeah. And then you've actually then taken the game of golf and started to practice golf instead of practice range, right? So you walk off that driving range. If you've played that golf course in your head, you're ready to go and play golf. You're ready. Um, versus, you know, as I saw it for so many years, time and time again, 100 balls, they, the person walks in with their driver, head cover on, brand new driver, 100 ball, and bashes 100 drivers. What a waste of time. I, th- I, th- I, th- waste of time. <laughs> I don't know who it was. I'm sure it was Dan. Said the... The drivers in one session, brilliant. Say that again, sorry. So, you know, effectively taking, you know, using up 10 rounds of golf, you know, of drivers approximately, I don't, yeah. and, but that that is one of one of my issues, and Dan said it as well. One of my issues with Top Tracer is they've got the long drive thing on there, and I'll go, I'll just hit six drives on here, and then like twenty later, I'm still whacking driver on the long drive. Um, but again, I suppose that's that's part of it. You self self discipline to make sure that you don't do that. Unfortunately, I think that you would say if you've done twenty, then probably ten or fifteen of them have been a waste of time, and you've not learned anything. Okay. So five of them would have been engaging you enough. Yeah. Um, after that, you're now swing fixing and, you know, trying to keep your head down and doing all the cliches, um, stuff like that. You, you know, you, you, you're trying to change your golf swing because you're, you know, this emotion of hitting the ball so badly is, you know, the red mist is in your eyes and you've lost it, basically. You, you're now completely off track. Yeah. And your sure. brain is no longer like like engaging enough, engaged enough. Okay, cool. So let's so let's recap. So the three secrets to better practice and improve, actual genuinely seeing better improvement is number one, quality, not quantity. We talked about uh, stepping off the mat each and every swing. Uh, we talked about having two or three practice swings, getting the right feel, and then going for it. And I saw a comment about someone taking like twelve practice swings, uh, not doing that. Two or three, make it feel good, and then go for it. Ranking the shot uh, each time. Uh, we then went on to, and it kind of follows along, we went on to secret number two, which was make your practice challenging and engaging. Yeah. Um, skills tests, uh, whether it's points, awarding yourself points based off like, this is the shot I'm aiming to hit, award yourself points based off that, where if you did it well, strike yeah. direction, speed tests. And this was going nicely along with our blocked practice, our varied practice and our random practice. Yeah. So blocked practice being take your seven iron, hit your drills, your 20 shots of that going on to challenging and engaging, hitting your varied practice, play different shots, take your six iron and try and play the three, four, five, six, seven different shots to different targets, different ranges, et cetera. Um, And then number three, replicating play. So imagine you were playing a round of go go driver, seven iron, chip, like whatever, right? Those are are the three things. Yeah, don't forget putting. Go and do a couple of parts on the mat if you can, if you need to. If you don't, you get somewhere on that, you know, on the range spaces, go and put a couple of balls. 
you know, just make sure you you add that in because you are going to putt. So you need to set up. You need to. Stay how, up. How, I guess it's all the same with putting practice, which none of us, I'm almost certain, don't do enough of. But same sort of principle. If you're doing a putting session, if you're doing a short game session, it's the same thing, right? Have your targets. So if we go to quality, not quantity, step away from each one. Don't just drag the ball in, putt, drag the ball in, putt, pick different angles, pick different places that you're putting to, things like that, right? Yeah, but again, you 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 need to do a yeah, the the block, the varied, the random, you know, the block would be working on two thing, key things for putting is face, face angle. So you need to set something up, maybe a couple of tees ahead of the ball in line with the hole, you know, uh, just over, just outside of ball's width for part, put the ball between the two tees into the hole. You can stand there and do that for maybe five, 10 minutes, maybe do that as a test, you know, yeah. full, full routine. So mark the golf ball, step behind it, look at the line, go down, replace the ball, put it between the two tees, start again full routine and maybe do five minutes of that. How many in a row can you do from three feet? Um, you know, and set yourself that as a record, as a, you know, as a score. Yeah. Um, the other thing with putting is working once you've done, once you're good at face control and face aim at strike is working on distance control. So you can, you know, place them clubs down, maybe one big footstep, one big step apart, which is a yard or three feet, you know, 10 steps across the green, lay 10 clubs down, three feet, nine feet, you know, three foot, six foot, nine foot, 12 foot, blah, 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 like yeah. a ladder. And then putt yeah. up and down the ladder. Again, try, I wouldn't, on this one, I wouldn't go block. So I wouldn't go two for three foot, then two to six foot, two to nine. I would go three foot, nine foot, 12 foot, three foot, 15 foot. Um, try and make this a little bit more, sorry, vary and random it a bit more. Okay. Um, and then, you know, so yeah, and then you can then start knocking it around the green at the end, um, knocking it to the different flags and stuff and finish off that way. But they're the two skills, really, the two, I'd say, you know, skills that you want to learn with putting, which are critical is face control and, and distance control. Cool. I think, I think for me, one of there's two sides to this the going to the range on my own is now going to be implementing these three things, the quality, not quantity, the challenging and engaging and the replicating play. Yes. As you said, if I was going for an hour, the 20 minutes on each 20 minutes on the, the, the block practice doing the quality things, 20 minutes on the essentially the skills test of different shots. So that might be on top trace. That might be the, uh, it might be one long drive, a couple of long drive. It might be the points game. It might be all those different things. And then 20 minutes doing replicating play where I might play four holes of the virtual golf, as it were. Yeah. Um, but I think also for me, there's a huge part of this where I, I think my practice improves to an element when I'm with someone else, i.e. We're, we're competing against each other, whether it's putting, whether it's vert like when I, when I went to the range with Ben, I reckon, and, and it said, someone put a comment in here, I can't, now can't find it, but they, they were saying we should arrange, arrange trips to the range together to play virtual golf because that forces you to step off the mat each time. Like that forces you to do quality practice yeah. because <laughs> you're, up, you're like, okay, what's well, that shot? So yeah. even, even though you might hit 50% less balls because you're with someone else, actually, you're probably, your practice is that much better that it's, it's better for you to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, 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 there we go. So, you know, stepping on, having somebody there challenge you, banter, um, you know, so it, it feels like, you know, get your heart beating a little bit more, feels like it's a proper golf shot. So, um, yeah, that's, that brings that back in. You know, when you've got your friend there, you're, you're already into bringing in secret number two. It's challenging more because somebody is there to challenge you. Yeah. So if that somebody is better than you, even better, you know, that's really good. Um, if not so, then, you know, you're not going to get a large amount of it. If they're not better than you, you will get something, but not. Yeah, a but lot. With, I, I guess with the virtual golf on, to, again, I, I'll come back to top. We should be, we should be sponsored by top tracer. Does anyone know like the key, like head of top tracer or something? Cause all we've done is talk about top tracer, but like on virtual golf, you set a handicap. Yeah. So I set my handicap. You can set yours. Someone else can set theirs. So, if you're playing match play, it's still to handicap. Yeah. So sure, it might not be hit this shape shot, which I can't do and you just do with ease, but it yeah. could be so, like the virtual golf stuff could work with that. Yeah, it can do. It can do, yeah. Uh, but, you know, I am, I'm, I'm still one of, you know, if you can find somebody that's better than you to practice with, you are going to learn more from that. Sure. So if you don't have that opportunity, then no problem. You know, play with your pals that are not. 
but if you can um you know find somebody that that can challenge you and i mean you know our group is definitely providing that facility because you know people can play with different people 100 all that are better. No, i've just seen there's a good question from andrew here is um this is i like this question would you treat a pre-round warm-up the same or is that a completely different talk altogether is that a whole nother evening me and you with a beer um i could go in that briefly uh, i wouldn't be doing any kind of swing grind on a pre-round fine on okay. the day i would not be thinking about golf swing i'd be doing varied and random and 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 testing and you know making sure you know I, I, you could do the tasks of the tape or the the direction task or the speed task um, Just not the drill stuff absolutely no drills on the day no drills when you when you arrive at the golf club and you you have arrived with your set of skills for the day your golf swing isn't going to change anymore yeah you've got that golf swing you've got to learn to point it and fire okay so you go to the range and you do your varied and random stuff um if there is a little bit of block just to maybe warming up same club just a bit of blocked there um you know same target but just try and mix it up as soon as you can and I'd finish off with the course, play it like the course, um, you know, replicate play basically uh, as quick as you can and get on. So I would like you to be on that tee and feel like it's a bit of deja vu that you've you've rehearsed it already. That first tee shot, yeah. Second hole that you're like you're there again, you know. Um, I just yeah. I'm just going to pause you for a second, Steve. Um, we've got. Um, I just want to ask everybody else. We've got those three secrets, right? So we've got the three secrets. I want to know what questions you've got around these three secrets. Did I say that right? It's a strong bit. Um, around the three secrets. So we've got quality over quantity. We've got challenging and engaging. And we've got replicate play. What questions have you got around those three secrets? Um, throw them at us uh, over the next couple of minutes. I'll keep Steve talking. As you've seen, it's not that difficult to keep Steve talking. Uh, we'll keep him talking uh, until those questions start coming in. If they're questions not related to the subject, what we'll do is we'll car park them and we'll put them out. Uh, I'll maybe answer them in a separate chat. They might give us a whole load more content and stuff to come back to and talk about. Um, I, see, I see Miles has got a question that he starts with. This probably isn't relevant for today. Um, something about hitting a divot. So we'll probably come back to that another time. Miles, but if you guys have got any questions around those three secrets about your practice sessions, your range sessions, so your quality over quantity, your challenging and engaging, and your replicating play, have you or have we answered it? Have you have you have we had everything from here? Uh, so let us know. I know we're about 30 seconds or so behind, so ask your questions. Uh, or if you just loved it so far, give us a thumbs up in the in the comments and make sure that we know that someone's still here. <laughs> someone's still here listening. <laughs> Um, I've just seen how long we've been talking for, Steve. We've been going for freaking ages. This is awesome. yeah, we've done pretty well there, though. <clears throat> I, I was like, yeah, it's the last like half an hour. This would be no problem. Um, so amazing that we still got people with us. That's great. Uh, can't see any. Can't see any questions coming through at the moment. We'll give them another thirty seconds just to ask any questions. Um, but Excuse for me, thoughts. for me, Steve, that's that's awesome. I. I can safely say I don't do any of those things consistently. Um, and I think I'll be going to implement them right now. Like I, I, I'm now not going to hit, well, chance I won't hit 100 balls. I, you might, I might get the 70 uh, option and do 70 and do, basically this is, this is going to be my routine. From what I've understood today, this is going to be my routine for the, for the foreseeable future. Turn up, get the 70 balls. If I, if I had time, I'd get 100, but I don't. Uh, do 20 minutes of drill work quality not quantity stepping off the mat each time two or three practice swings pick the shot that i want to play hit that or try and hit that shot yep. 20 minutes of challenging and engaging so skills tests whether that strike direction speed playing around with those different skills and yep. then finally 20 minutes of replicating play yeah um, i guess my question is is there any is there ever a situation where i wouldn't do that and i'd do something completely different no, I mean, we just, Andrew said it there, isn't he? On the day that you go and play, um, you just. I'm in a practice session. Is there any time I turn up to a practice session and I'm just doing an hour of drills, or is that just not worth it? No. No. Okay. Great. Wouldn't be doing it. Wouldn't be doing it. I'd, I'd, I'd absolutely 100% get, get into those different modes, get into, you know, keep, set yourself, do the skills testing regularly, um, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you. I know that we feel that we have to go and drill it in. We have to go and grind that new golf swing, you know, after that lesson. You get enough of that 
but you need to understand you are actually still getting that swing, making that swing change when you are doing the different tasks and stuff. Yeah. You know, and I think that, you know, sometimes we get, get into this habit of actually, you know, fixing our golf swing where, you know, we get into this kind of internal, um, you know, focus and we try and focus on our body and our elbow being in that position and the club being there and it has to be there. And instead of actually, well, there's a line there. What do I need to do to get the club head to hit in front of the line? What do I need to do to get the club head behind the line? Well, behind the line, that would be a flop shot. So that's really good. I could use that one. Well, the in front of the line would be out of rough or out okay. of pivot. Um, okay, so Steve, Steve, I I am in the habit of videoing my swing. Yeah. Is is that is that okay to do? It? Should I, like I'll video if I'm having a bad day as well. I'll video it a lot. I'll be like, what am I doing wrong? And I'll try and analyze it and try and figure out what on earth is going wrong. Is that okay. should I do that or is that just a waste of time? Yes, video it. Video it during the block phase. Video okay. it when you're doing your swing grind. Video it when you're doing your feel versus real. You know, when we said about you know, um, ranking or rating the shot out of 10, you know, yeah. so you practice drill. So this is during your block phase. Yeah. Um, video the practice drill. Yeah. And yeah. swing with it. So you there's a drill and then a swing. Don't hit a ball, but yeah. drill and then swing. And then video the actual ball swing and then compare the two. So... You should have you should have rated your practice swing, including the drill, out of ten. Yeah. Or say, well, that was a seven, and then you hit the golf ball. If it was a four, then you've got two videos. One is a four out of ten. One is a seven. What's the difference? You don't need a golf pro to spot the difference. Yeah. So you know you drill. You know the club should have been there, or the heel needs to. You for you, for example, your right heel needs to be on the ground. Keep that right. freaking heel down. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> for you, so you're feeling like the heel's on the ground. You did yeah. it in the practice swing. You did it in that. You know the drill felt that, and the practice swing was a ten. The heel was down. You know, but you didn't do it. So, you know, what can you do to kind of enforce it? You know, constrain it a bit more. Can you put something under your right toe? You know. The, 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 you know, think outside the box. Cool. Okay. I, I think my limit is I, I get stuck in a, here's what I should be doing. If it's, if I'm not, I get frustrated with myself, basically, I think is, is, is the key. And then I do a cop work myself out of it, I guess. Yeah. Um, we've got, we've got some questions coming in, Steve. You ready for these? Yeah, go for it. Okay. So I'll, before it disappears off the page, we've got Miles who says he can't stand the range because he struggles to visualize his shots. Uh, the course is quite quiet, so he just goes out and hits a few balls on each hole to practice. Is that okay? Yes, because if it, if, if it means you going out and practicing, absolutely. The only thing I would say with that, and it was something that I did, and I had a spell in my amateur career where I was going out and playing more than I was practicing, is that um, I got into this mode that I kind of had another ball in my pocket mode. So I kind of was going out on the golf course and I wasn't really that, that ball that were really counted. The first shot is what you've got. You've got one go, but I kept get, I got into this mode of, well, I've got another ball. So then when I went and played in a medal and I'd never used to understand when I went to go and play in a medal or a tournament, a, a competition, and I didn't have the extra ball in my pocket anymore. So now all of a sudden I've got this white thing here and I've got to do it in one shot. So I, don't, I, can't, I can't drop another ball down like I was doing when I was practicing. Sure. So you're not practicing how you're playing when you're doing that, when you're taking several balls on the golf course. And also the, the course manager won't like you and the green keepers won't like you. <laughs> sure. But, but A, if it's quiet, that should be fine. And also that is, that's replicating play in its best form, right? It's replicating play, but I wouldn't keep dropping balls down in the same place. Got you. So if you're going to do it, go and play three holes, but do it properly. Yeah, I would say if you're going to don't set yourself a task, if you miss the fairway, if you don't hit the, you know, the, uh, if you if, if you want to drop another ball, drop it over in the rough or drop it, you know, 10 yards closer or, you know, just if you're going to do that. I mean, I would I, I would say, yes, you can, but don't hit the second shot. Don't hit another ball from the same place. Got you. OK, that makes sense. Um, there was a good question from Chris. I'm going to try and get through these. But I can't, for some reason, I can only see four or five comments at a time. So. Uh, Chris says, Steve, you're talking about shot shaping and changing it up at the range. But for the likes of us who perhaps don't know, don't physically understand how to hit a draw, don't physically know what a, a fade look like, how we set up to hit a fade. 
are you saying that we should still just kind of experiment and try or do we need to actually understand that's how you hit a draw and then go and try and do it or is it an element of both I, you definitely need to go and try I don't think you should ever never stop trying to do okay. it um, there's an element of swing your swing so even with your technique there's a way of doing it and you would learn to do it I mean of course there's to get some instruction of course you know to get taught how to draw the ball but maybe just relate it back to something that you've done before you know all of us most of us have played football right yeah. so how do how do I it, it wasn't it's not coincidental that David Beckham to learn to curve the ball learned to stand side on to the ball so now he's running at the ball from an angle which then allows him to swing his leg across the ball so his, his his leg swinging towards the corner flag but his boots looking at the goal yeah so you know I, I don't think he was actually taught that I think he was probably more of he learned to stand a little bit more to the side and he could get more curve yeah um you know I know it comes down to yeah okay he had probably thousands of hours of doing it and he had that mindset that you know he wanted to be the best and he wanted to learn to curve the ball and and, and do it that way um but when you compare him to Ronaldo that runs straight at it instead of curling it um yeah well you've got I always remember the outside of the boot Roberto Carlos out the other way right so you've got yeah so I think there's probably some more there's I mean there's probably three hold of the conversation for another day but essentially go and have some fun try and actually just try and practice hitting different shape shots absolutely you know we can have a discussion about shot shaping and stuff like that but no problem I mean I would be trying to experiment don't don't ever stop experimenting and trying this stuff you know and do it during that that particular phase of your practice session got you uh, Chris uh, Christian's asked a good question if you are in the random phase of your practice and you say and I'm going to put a I'm going to do what I would say right I'm going to try and fade this one yeah and I screw it up and I it just it doesn't do what I thought it was going to do. Yep. Do I try and hit that same shot again or do I move on to a different shot? Move on to a different shot. Okay, great. Question answered. There you go, Christian. Um, Andrew's asked, are there any training aids that are an absolute must for a good practice session? Ooh, oh, I do like a good training aid. I think you've got about 30,000 in your, in, your, in your range, right? Um, my, my studio replicates Toys R Us. Yeah, um, I've, got <laughs> great, I've got pretty much every training aid. I love a good training aid. Um, oh, there's loads out there. Uh, the smart ball where you have the ball between your arms. That's fantastic. Love okay. that training aid. The one that you kind of, I put this, you know, you know, something between my arms here. But yeah, I, I know what you mean. Like dangles around your neck, right? And you... Yeah, Justin Rose is one for using it. So yeah. the smart ball, ball between your forearms, keeps that connection of arms and torso really good for short shots and even distant shots. Very, very good. Um, there's a training aid called um, Swing Perfect, uh, which has got like two attachments that go to you. It's like a you put on this like latex bands and they sit on your shoulders and then okay. you hold them here and it helps you keep the swing nice, keeps your arms a little bit straighter. Okay. Allow you to swing your arms across your chest or bring your arms in. Okay. Your arms really wide, that's really cool. I mean, is, is it though? What, are we talking like a thing that you put on? Yeah, yeah. It's like so uh, going the range like, in like S&M style gear. Is that what you're saying? It depends what you're into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it can double up to be whatever you would like it to be, Christopher. <laughs> oh, okay, right. So moving swiftly on. Uh, are, there, are there any other questions? I think that's, I think we've got through... Uh, most of the questions there we've, we've been on here for ages as well Steve and I, I and I want to let them know about our exciting new project that we're launching so uh, if they've got if you guys have got more questions or perhaps if you're watching this later on uh, still throw the questions in there and Steve and I will try and uh, get back in and have a look through them uh, but I wanted to, I want to take this moment to tell you about something that we're launching and I'm super excited about this from the beginning I've always joked and whenever we talk to companies brands whoever we always talk about how we're a club, right? And even um, Ryan and I had a chat a while back. He was like, "Go talk to like go talk to England Golf. They'll they'll be all over this." And I got an email back within about twenty seconds, being like, "We don't work with societies. That's not what we do." Um, so that was amusing. You're not a club. You're a society. It's like, ah, oh, damn it. Okay, but I feel like we're a club. Uh, it's just that we lack a few key essentials, right? We lack the clubhouse. We lack, yeah. of course. Uh, but uh, there's some way around it. And up until, you know, Steve came along, 
I'd say we lacked a head pro. I feel like we've now got a head pro, which is uh, which is awesome. And but what comes with a head pro would be a coaching academy, right? We'd want to be able to provide coaching. We want to be able to help you guys uh, get better. Uh, so I think what we were super excited about was going how how on earth could we provide an actual coaching experience for you guys, like an actual coaching academy? You guys, I know have had help from Steve like, and he's so good within the group he breaks down your swings he gives you tips and um, but like you guys know if you go for one lesson like that will get you so far but then what you need is follow-up lessons you need more training you need more stuff like that and I was I said to Steve I was like this is great I love that you're helping people with their swings but I want more like I, maybe I'm just being greedy but I'm like I want more I want to see these guys get that and then move forward through a training program like I, again I come from a, a, a fitness program a fitness background it was the same thing in fitness you you'd go and buy three personal training sessions, use them over the course of six months and then moan that you hadn't got the results. And I'd be like, you've done three sessions. Like, what were you expecting? You're expecting, you're expecting miracles. Um, but it's the same in the golf world, right? We go for one lesson and I'm absolutely an example of this. I go for one lesson. I work at the thing for three months. It works for the first month. And then two months later, I'm like, oh, it's not working anymore. Um, probably because it's not now not an issue that I need to work on. I now need to go back and do something else and then change something else and tweak something else and improve something else. I didn't have a plan. I didn't have a, a process to follow, uh, if that makes sense. And so what, what I'm talking about is we are launching the Sunday Red Golf Academy with Steve being our head coach, our head pro. Uh, and I'm super, super, super excited about this, which means that we're going to be able to get to you guys. A, it means more like coaching content, but also it means actually being able to work with you guys. Like I, not me, because I'm not going to coach you anything, uh, but Steve, you're going to be working with Steve uh, through, we're talking lessons, we're talking coaching, we're talking training programs. There is so much stuff that we're going to be diving, diving into. And, and I'm kind of, and I want to, before I get too excited, we haven't actually tested it, right? So, so before I get too excited and be like, yes, every single person in this group needs to sign up. I said to Steve, I was like, Steve, we need to test it first. Yeah. Um, we need to put a beta group through this uh, and we need to see if anyone is super excited about jumping, uh, jumping on board and getting involved in something, in something like this. So what I'm going to do, and there will be, and I'm going to say it up front now before I go into it, there will be an investment. It's just going to be much lower than what it will be in the future. And the reason there's going to be an investment is because like in the fitness world, again, I said this to Steve, if there isn't an investment, we're not invested, right? And if I'm getting something for free, I don't actually take it as seriously as I should. Kind of like if you've got two, two golf balls, you're just, you're not going to, the first one isn't real. So um, I always... I always found that there's something lacking in golf lessons and golf programs being that there just wasn't that level of accountability moving forwards. And Steve has come back with, and actually I, I, I probably should give him a shout out. I know he was watching as well. Um, uh, Spider golf Cedric was been doing some really cool stuff with us, which we're going to be talking to you guys about and showing some stats and stuff. Yeah. Top um, man. <clears throat> thank you, Steve. He's, he's a top man. He's helped us produce uh, you know, an amazing program. So, Absolutely. And the stats are just insane, but we'll come back to that uh, later on. But essentially what I was really worrying about, I was like, Steve, I don't just want this to be like an online lessons thing. I don't want this to just turn into a, a YouTube thing of uh, videos. I don't want this to just turn into a generic, you must follow this plan. Like there's, there's so much of that out there. I don't want that. And it doesn't help. Like we all know you can go and watch 30 different YouTube videos and be worse off than when you started, right? And I said, I said, Steve, I was like, I can't have that. I don't want it. I don't just want a generic sign up. Here's your a generic program. So what what Steve's put together, I'm I'm super excited about. Shall I? What do you want? How do you want to do this, Steve? Do you want to do you want to tell them about it? Shall I tell start it and then you like what do you want to do? Yeah, I'm quite happy to go through what what they get, what what the uh, the plan is, and what's you know effectively what they get. Okay, perfect. Talk, talk me through. I'm, I'm your, I'm the, the new player. Talk me through my journey. What am I going to get? What am I going to do? Okay, so it's a, it's a twelve week plan. Okay, so we start. We initially we start off the, uh, the plan with a skills test. So it'd be like an evaluation or kind of benchmarking. Where are you at? Um, and then effectively you take on board a plan which will be break one hundred, break ninety, or break eighty. Okay. Okay. Um, so you know this is kind of like a mini assessment. 
so effectively we get you to to break your you know that barrier uh, and to get you under that mark so uh, the plan includes four online lessons uh, so it's a lesson every three weeks there'll be one one hour session and then there'll be three half hour sessions so there'll be every three weeks uh, an online lesson with me whether that be if you can do it at a driving range i'm happy to facetime it at a driving range or whether we just do it one-to-one -one in the evening um, effectively we set you up with like a, a google drive so you have your own folder so when you're practicing you're uploading your swings i can then look at the swings so then when i get a chance to speak to you there's loads of um of evidence there's loads of videos that we can talk about specific shots that you've done when you've been practicing so and that's, just to jump in there steve that's the whole idea right i go I feel my, I go do my skills test to start off with. I have my base measures. Here's where I'm starting from. Uh, I fill my swing with, I think you said I had to do like driver, five iron, seven iron wedge or something, right? And we film those. We upload those to the coaching area. Yeah. You then get a chance to review them. And then on, our, on the coaching call, you're taking me through that and saying, Chris, this is where you're rubbish. This is where you're really good. This is, and then giving me and breaking it down and then giving me my one, two, three things to go away and work on for the next three weeks, right? Yeah, so the evaluation, the skills test, I'm seeing you hit driver irons and wedge shots. So I'm seeing the key skills there and some putts and um, if we can get that in as well. So I'm gonna see the skills that right. you need to improve. Um, and then obviously there we've got the benchmark, we've got the, um, you know, uh, where you're at now. And then we can, I can then start to work on the program to actually bespoke it or tailor it to you. So, uh, so we, get, we, get, we do lesson one where you've already seen my stats because I've done my skills challenge. You've seen my swing. You're analyzing the swing. You're going through that. You're giving me a one, two, three things. And then I've got my program, which you send me away with, i.e. here's your drills. But when you're at the range, here's what I want you to do. Do this activity, this activity, this activity. And you're giving me the actual structure to my program, right? Yeah. I'm giving you bespoke drills and I'm giving you bespoke practice plans and bespoke, you know, tests during those practices as well. Awesome. So, you know, this isn't generic stuff. Each person is treated, you know, differently. You know, they'll be in that category of break 100, break 90. So it's all specific yeah. you know, so to get them to that break. You're not, not trying to get somebody that's shooting 105 to shoot 89. It's yeah, break true. 100. So we only got to drop by six shots so it's that's, that's realistic goals right I, I could say i could say to you i want to i want to break whatever but if i haven't got anywhere near it before then let's let's be realistic from the off right yeah we set these smarter goals and we, it's it, that's the realistic part of it and you know just making sure that it's bite-sized amounts it's you know i'm there with you for the 12 weeks you know i'm always going to be on call i'm a pro in the pocket 24 7 i'm on whatsapp that's part of the thing as well this is what gets me excited steve I know how much people love it when you get, when you do one video of their swing. Can you, like, if I had access to you, like, all the time, every time I go to the range, upload my video, and then you're like, Chris, tweak this, tweak that. I mean, who else would get excited about that? Like, surely someone else in this group is getting excited about the idea of having Steve, like, there, upload a video, Steve reviews it, and then gets back to you and you have a lesson around it. Anyone else getting excited about that? Like, give me a thumbs up in the, in the comments or something, if that's something that you would want. You'd want Steve there. Uh, working with you uh, over the course of 12 weeks to improve your game. Like, there must be some people in here that would be keen for that as well. Um, I'm, by the way, definitely in on this. This is, uh, I'm super excited about this. I know we've already got, uh, Ben is in as well. Uh, I mean, this is just saying that they were Christmas. And obviously having this Google Drive set up is that you go, you're going to have your bespoke drills, your bespoke practice plan. You go to the range with your smartphone, you video your swings, you upload them to your file. I get the notification. I'm looking at the swings. I may even be able to give some straight back feed, you know, some feedback there and then. I can't guarantee it, but sure. I will always come back to you at some point within 24 hours. But if I am available, but you're you're keeping a running diary. It's like yeah. practice session one folder in the Google Drive. There's my swings. You know, and we keep it, you know, we'd, we'd, we'd be tracking stats together and talking, you know, the important things, the numbers that count and um, breaking it down specifically. Um, so it's, it's you know, measurable um, as well. So, you know, that I, I, I think that, you know, we've talked about this. We've been working on this project for a while now. It's, you know, I, I, I want to work with, you know, these people, you know, and I can do this. We can do this remotely without a problem. Um, yeah, I, I think the key for me that there's a few kind of key things here, right? We're, well, first of all, I want to be like 
also I was chatting to Steve about this and he, he put a line out there when we were chatting. He was like, Chris, I guarantee results. And I was like, hold up, pause. We ask these people to invest. And if they don't improve, you're willing to give them their money back. Yeah. And he was like, yes, 100%. So first of all, I want to lead with that, but he's guaranteeing results. If, if, big if, you've got to follow the program, right? You've got to do the work. You've got to yep. put in the work. And that's why I, you know, I want to make this clear. Anyone who gets involved on this, I don't want someone who just wants to do one session and imagine that it's going to get better. I want people who are committed to getting better at this game. So if you are committed to improving, this is definitely, definitely going to be for you. I can see Chris Mead said um, uh, he's been, he's had it this way since November and it's transformed his game. Uh, Chris Phillips said Steve's going to be abused. I'm like, well, that's, you know, that's part of, you know, you, if you're signing up to the Academy, then that's what you're, you get access to. You get access to Steve, which is going to be, which is going to be huge. Like, again, I say, People have had one video from you and it's like changing their game. Imagine having that for 12 weeks of consistent practice of moving forwards with that. That's going to be huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, gonna, we can. So yeah, basically, is, is there any, have we, I haven't even asked you this. Have we put any limitation on who, for the beta group? So to give you guys an idea, we're only going to let 12 people maximum do this for the first group. Eventually it will be open to everybody. Yeah. Um, but for the first group, it's only going to be open to 12 people. Yeah. And so 12. is there any limit? Is there any limitation on where you're at in your game? Do we have to, is it people that are only going to break 100, break 90? Like, is there any limitation? No, no, we've categorized it as break 100, break 90, break 80. I've even got, you know, you've seen the roadmap. I've even got a break 70. Um, it's only relevant if you're shooting in the mid 70s, that is. Um, yeah. So I've got a program for every golfer. Okay, if we've got somebody that's shooting 120, we, we could, we're probably going to look at, you know, just reducing that score down and then start to work towards the break in 100. But we will talk about breaking 100 because that's the first, that's always that first milestone. Everyone's milestone when we first play the game is that elusive 100, breaking it. You know, getting to the 28 handicap, getting under it. So, you know, we will benchmark from the skills test from you, what, you know, doing your stats, completing your stats on, on the basic app, um, and then coming back and we'll be looking at it and you, I'm in your pocket. I'm there. I'm going to be helping you throughout the journey. Yeah, I love it. And I think when, when I said to you, I said, how much, how much do we charge? How, what's the investment for this? What's a realistic investment? Because it's got to be worth, Steve, your time. But it's also got to be like a good enough investment to make us actually do something about it. So um, and if we added it up and when we go through and we go through like, the, the hours of coaching that you're going to get, the, uh, the programs that you're going to get, the different tuition videos, the stats testing, the, um, the oh, I can't even remember what else is involved, all the different kind of the putting stuff, the short game stuff, the long game stuff, all that different stuff. I was looking at it and going, like if we were to sell each of these individually, it'd be like four or 500 quid, like minimum. Yeah. Um, and then Steve was like, okay, it's Sunday Red Golf, let's do a deal. Yeah. So I was like, awesome. I'm like, I want, I want my team, I want my squad to have a deal. Uh, and we go, okay, great. So let's let's say moving forward, we price it at a round. Again, we don't know this for sure, guys. We're going to see how well it works. But let's say it was at like 247, yeah. like as moving forward for the whole 12 weeks, the whole investment for the whole 12 weeks. Um, and then I was like, yeah, but beta group, this is beta group. This is the tester group. So uh, the, the first 12 people won't pay that. The first 12 people aren't going to pay anywhere near that. Uh, the first 12 people, I need to get this right. What did we say? The first 12 people are going to pay 197. 197. 197, right? For all of that. 12 weeks coaching, 12 weeks programming, 12 weeks of like the, the lessons, the short game, the long game, everything, right? Having Steve, as you said, in your pocket, which sounds a bit weird, but having Steve there working with you on your game for a solid 12 weeks. Uh, and again, I said this, it's for people who are excited about improving their game this year. Um, we can only take on 12 people. I've limit, I, like we put that limit there because I need to see that this actually gets incredible results. I know it's going to get good results, but I want to see people get like incredible results. Like sure, Chris Mead is now changing his game uh, and he's done brilliant with that, but I want to see more of those. I want to see loads of those. <laughs> Miles has said he won't upload anything inappropriate. Uh, good <laughs> Miles, that's great. Uh, so, but that's, that is where we're at. So the first 12 people, we're only taking on 12, uh, you can be anywhere in your game, but you just have to have a target or a goal. If you're not sure what it is, you can talk through it with Steve, right? You'll, you'll go dive into the different goals and work out what's realistic for people, right? 
Yeah. And let me just clarify this. This is online lessons. So you don't have to live near me, right? Yeah. So this can be anywhere in the country. It's an online yeah. lesson like you and I are doing through Zoom now. Yeah. You're going to, it's going to be a FaceTime, a face to face, um, FaceTime, WhatsApp, whatever we need to do to communicate, whatever ways and means you've got of doing it. Yeah. Uh, I, I contact you and I will speak to you face to face like this and we will talk your game and your golf swing. And then plan your plans, etc., will be sent, you know, according. So this is what we do. This is our time together. And um, so we can, we, you can access me anywhere in the country. Perfect. And I know, um, Steve, we spoke about the um, two things. One, a do, do people have to pay in full? Uh, the answer is no. However, I'm going to throw in a little bonus. If you do decide to uh, to go, yeah, I'm up for this. I'm going to pay my one nine seven now and commit to this. I, I will send you a tour hacker t-shirt uh so you'll get a bonus tour hacker t-shirt uh, but if you don't want to pay in full you can do the a payment plan which is just a monthly uh installment of 65 67 i think it worked out to um so what i'll do is i'll just i'm i'm now realized i've shared this in 17 different places in the sunday red facebook group i'll post on the comments uh this is not a jazzy sign up page this is if you're ready to commit now, go do it now. If you would like to have a chat with either myself or Steve, probably Steve, because he's going to be hard to keep you through it, then just uh, reach out to either one of us and just book in a time to chat with Steve about it. Find out a bit more about how it's going to help you. Uh, basically booking a, a, a quick session just to make a quick call, just to be like, right, is this right for me? Am I going to be the right person? Because I want 12 of the right people. And if you're not a good fit for the program, like we... It, I mean, this is going to sound harsh, but I just wouldn't, we wouldn't have you, we wouldn't invite you on. We want thing, those 12 people that are committed, that are willing to uh, put in the work, that are willing to put in the effort, willing to invest and actually get results. 100%, yeah, 100% sorry. Um, and, you know, we're talking about, we're, we're offering this money back guarantee. So, you know, I'm, we've, I'm putting in the work. I'm going to be putting 100% of my work in. So we know that we're going to get these people that are, are prepared to go in. Um, you know, we guarantee the results. So, you know, that is, that is where we stand with it. Yeah, perfect. And then I think because it's super relevant um, and we need to kind of, I know this will be a huge concern for people. If for whatever reason the country shuts down tomorrow and we can't get to the range and we can't practice, what we decided is all that we'll do is we'll just delay the start of this. It's not 12 weeks starting from now and you then can't practice for four weeks. It's not that we would just delay the start of it and move it, move it back a few weeks, right? Yeah, great. Perfect. So I'm putting the link in the comments now. Uh, if any of you are super keen and ready to go, click that button now. Again, it's 12 people. That's all we're taking on. It'll, it'll be it'll be an element of first come, first serve. But obviously, if you're not a right fit for it, then we'll, we'll <laughs> you'll not be on there. But I think most people in here would be a fair in the Sunday Red Golf Group would be a fairly good fit. Um, if yeah. so, what's the best if they if they're not quite sure yet, Steve? Should I just get them to message you on Facebook? Yeah, absolutely. Just um, just come direct to me. Um, you know, just send me a message direct uh, on Facebook on the messenger. You know, ask me any question. Um, you know, if you leave your number, I'll call you. Let me know what time it's best and I'll call you. I prefer if I can speak to you um, rather than just messaging um, and have a chat with you about it. Um, but, you know, Look, okay. Okay. Well, I'm gonna. I, I think we've covered everything there. I mean, I get I get super excited about it, but basically, this is this is the reason I'm getting excited is because this is one of the first steps to actually creating a real club in my mind. Yeah. We've got like that for me is a huge step. We've got sure we don't have the course, sure we don't have a clubhouse. I'm working on the clubhouse thing, um, but having a proper coaching program I think is going to be huge. Like I really do. Like I think that's if we can support people. And by the way, guys, Steve's not going to stop putting content into the group. It's just this is for people who really want a structure plan, a structure program, and they really want to move forward with the game. Strong um, the key to it there. Absolutely. So this is not ad hoc stuff. Can you know? Can you send me a video on this? Can you send me on that? Yeah. This is a structured plan. Structured plan. Structured program. This is for people that really want to see improvement. So. Um, Guy, if, um, you're all still here, which is amazing, which I really appreciate. So if you've got any questions um, about the academy, throw them at us. If you've got any other questions about the practice stuff, uh, throw them at us. Steve, we've been here for like an hour and a half. This is incredible. We should probably let these guys go. I'll finish my beer 
freaking ages ago. Um, <laughs> I should have opened this one. I've still got this one here, and I, still, I might enjoy this one in a minute. Um, if you guys have got any questions about the academy, uh, throw them at us. It's not fully formed yet. It's a work in progress. We're going to be building this. We're going to be improving it. Um, but we're excited to take uh, take those first 12 people through uh, the academy program. It's a 12-week journey. I'm super excited. But if you've got any questions, throw it at us. Like this is, uh, Chris has said, when we get the land, I'll build the clubhouse. Great. Chris is, uh, Chris is here. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, but yeah, so guys, any questions on the academy? Throw them at us right now. If you've got any, if you want to book a call with Steve, reach out to him. I've tagged him in the comment in the uh, in the post. Uh, yeah, just just comment now. I'll give you guys thirty seconds. I know you're thirty seconds behind, but uh, any questions, throw them at us. Tony says this is huge, awesome. Um, Matthew's running the bar in the clubhouse when I get it. Uh, <laughs> great. I feel like I'm gonna. Yeah, perfect. That's great. Uh, any questions about the academy? Are you guys excited about the idea of the academy? Is this something that you guys can get excited about? Is it something that you're excited to see part of our club building? Uh, it, it's come from a few ideas of people within the group, which I'm excited about. Um, Dan, oh, Dan said, what if we're in the area? Can we do any of it face to face? I don't know the answer to that. That's probably something that Steve and I should chat through because I need to make sure it's, it works. But I, I guess there would be a way that we can make that happen on some form or another Steve right yeah that there's 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 ways of doing that yeah we can um we can certainly um work around that, no problem okay great so that answers Dan's question so Dan's in basically Dan's excited um Dan I will yeah just message Steve and we can get that all set up for you I'm now just going back to YouTube and all the other Facebook pages where people are um great I'm looking through questions uh Andrew is in. That's awesome. Love that, Andrew. Fantastic. Uh, that's Andrew. Uh, that's the Andrew. That's Andrew who I met. It's still from here, Steve, who uh, oh, yeah. new clubs and is excited to get going with those. So that's awesome. Uh, what else have we got going on here? Anyone else? Anybody else? Andrew's in. Graham, Chris. Great ideas, Chris. Great group. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate it. We're working at it. There's lots of things we can do to improve, but thank you. Um, would there be... Dan says, sounds great. Would there be a second academy considering these uncertain times? Dan, um, basically, there, there will be a second group that will go through this. There'll be Once we've gone through the first group, we'll eventually open it up to everyone. Uh, this first group is a beta group, and we're kind of just making... We want to the people that jump on it now will obviously get the benefit of the lower investment uh, because it's all about making sure that this is as awesome as we think it's going to be. Uh, yeah. There's still the guaranteed results. And yes, because it's uncertain times, if, if we can't, if like everything shuts down and we can't get to the range and we can't play, um, then we're all we're going to do is move it back. So if you, and if you said yes today, and well, I want to do this, this sounds amazing. Um, and then tomorrow, everything shuts down. You, your 12 weeks doesn't start tomorrow. Your 12 weeks starts from when we like can actually get access to everything basically. Um, so yeah, so if you're keen and you're like, I want to do this, then then just let us know and we can, we, if, if that does happen, then we can adjust for that for sure. Yeah. And I mean, I think we're looking at trying to get this um, started quite quickly, aren't we, Chris? So, yeah, I mean, subject to numbers, we are planning on trying to launch this because being the beta, oh. you've got to get this going so that we can roll these out. Um, these yeah, I, th the, I think the key the key is like if 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 you, they don't all have to start at the same time, right? I think it's if someone said tomorrow I'm in, they could get started right away. They don't have to wait for the 11 other people, right? So um, they could get started, couldn't they? Yeah, they could do yeah. yeah. So it's just, I'm going to stop it when it gets to 12 people. That's all. Yeah. Um, great. Any other questions, guys? Throw them out. So you guys have been with us for ages. Thank you. I really appreciate this. Um, Andrew Woody says, Chris, Sunday red golf polos. Uh, it's like he's reading my mind, Steve. Uh, yeah, we're, I'm, I have had discussions and I'm looking at different options, just looking for something that I can really get on board with something that I really like um, and haven't quite found that brand or partner that I'd like to work with yet, if I'm brutally honest. Um, but there are lots of people suggesting brands, lots of people suggesting people to work with, which is awesome. And I value that and appreciate that. So thank you. Uh, what else have we got going in? <laughs> so gear is apparently quite clear. By the way, who, anyone on here actually bought a, uh, actually grabbed themselves a tour hacker or a tour champ t-shirt. 
Um, the tour champ, I've always, I'm a bit like, oh, who can wear the tour champ? Who's what? Like, I feel like, um, who won, who won Bletchingly? Warren. I feel like Warren could uh, grab a tour champ and wear that with, uh, with pride. Uh, we've got anything else. Tony says, thanks guys. Thanks. If you, this is, we've kind of gone through everything now we've, we've gone through the three secrets we've gone through the academy if there's anything you guys want to ask question wise throw them at us other than that um it's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you guys tonight thank you for tuning in thank you for asking all your questions thank you for commenting really really appreciate it um thank you for listening to me and steve uh dribble on for an hour and 45 minutes now so uh i hope you guys have a, a, an awesome evening i uh, hope you guys are able to get out this weekend i know there's a there's a there's a Northwest Golf Day happening this weekend, fingers crossed. Uh, so if you're playing in that, have a huge, have an awesome time, enjoy it. Looking forward to hearing how you guys get on. Uh, but yeah, any other questions? Steve and I will hang around for 20 more, 30 more seconds while we wait for any more questions. Um, and let us let us know. Um, I'll just Steve. Anything else you'd like to say before they go? I'll finish two beers. You you had two. You didn't see no, that. Second. You didn't see that. I sneak that second one in. <laughs> you didn't see the second bit go. That's fantastic. No, uh, no I enjoyed that. It was, um, you know. I good. think I think there was a comment earlier that said, "Are we going to do more of these videos?" I think we absolutely should. As I said, I'd love to uh, do some stuff on the range as well with you, Steve. I think there's some cool stuff that we could do there. Yeah, absolutely. And we're, 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 this is a learning curve, right? We've, um, you've done a couple of these now, you're experienced, but um, I'm new to this. So this is uh, <laughs> a, a learning curve for me. I'm pretty good. I, I, at, you know, I think you've done well on your first appearance, Steve. I think, I think the, uh, I think the crowd would be impressed. I think the, uh, the audience would be, uh, be mightily impressed that this was your first, first time on a, on a live video in the group. Yeah, it was, it was okay. Um, it was good, I, no, I, I'm next. always one at looking at it. I'll play this back and I'll, I will we'll, um, assess myself later on, but um, yeah, no. <laughs> review it. Review awesome. it. Right, so I'm going to say uh, goodbye to everybody in the group. I haven't seen any more questions coming through. Um, so guys, enjoy it. Have a, have an awesome weekend. Hopefully you're able to get on the course and play. Uh, stay safe and uh, catch you guys later on. <laughs>